Joining me now is Stacy Hirsch. She is the executive director of the Department of Arkansas Heritage. Good to have you back with us. Thank you, Roby. How was your holiday? It was great. You're dressed for Christmas I'm now. I'm ready too. for Christmas now. We've transitioned to Christmas season. I got my season. red tie on too. I'm <laughs> ready for Christmas too. Let's get my little push for snow up there. We'll go for that. All right, I'm going to read off a list to you and okay. I want you to, I'm going to quiz you here, see if you know what we're. Little Rock, North Little Rock, Conway, Jonesboro, Fort Smith, Van Buren, Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, Bentonville, Salem Springs, Hot Springs, El Dorado, Batesville. Why are all of these downtowns seeing an, a redevelopment boom? Um, I would guess it's because they've realized the value of their historic and cultural resources. Is that it? I will. I, you know, it's the answer that you tell me it is. But I mean, it's um, not. A, it's exciting to see all of this yes. activity. You travel the state a lot. You're involved in historic preservation and heritage, and that's what is going on in all these places. It really is, and um, we are very excited to be a part of that. And you know, we talk about quality of life. I would argue that the Department of Arkansas Heritage, through our many programs, has a huge impact on the quality of life in the state of Arkansas. Uh, those cities that you mentioned, a lot of them are making, um, making use and protecting and promoting their historic and cultural resources as part of um, their downtown quarters. Um, there was just another article on Batesville. Batesville is doing an amazing job there. That's a Main Street program, <coughs> and we have worked closely with them for many years. They've taken advantage of National Register status. They've utilized tax credits. Um, grants from the Department of Arkansas Heritage and other places. So I really think that um, many of these cities have realized the value and uh, are making use of it. I talked with uh, Doyle Rogers back in his heyday there and he used to tell me that every city that he would go to, because he invested all over the country, I think a lot of people don't realize, he said the first place he would go is the downtown mm -hmm. of a city he was looking to invest in. Mm -hmm. If they care about their downtown, I care enough to even think about doing something here. I think that's pretty true. I love that. We've got 39 communities in Arkansas that participate in either a Main Street community or a downtown network community. And uh, this was started in 1984 as a partnership between Historic Preservation, Preserve Arkansas, and Economic Development. And since that time, there's been $35 million of investment in public projects in these Main Street communities. So um, it's it's a public-private partnership yeah. and it really does work. You guys can help jumpstart some things, but then the momentum kind of kicks in yes. and it takes off. Talk, talk to me about what, and you've seen this from the city director side of things I as have, well. I have. How do you, what, what I guess, where do you get to the tipping point there when enough momentum has built? What makes it work for private development? You know, um, it, it's about people and people that are willing to come to that area and either live uh, or shop, visit, work. It's, it's all of that. And, and there is a tipping point and we do, um, we make investment in terms of grants, but we also have tools that are valuable to help you get to that tipping point. Um, for example, we know it's frequently more expensive to rehabilitate a historic property. Mm -hmm. That's why the state historic tax credit is there. We also have grants, uh, we call them HPRG, and they're for um, income producing properties that just need a little extra help in, um, if they're eligible for the National Register, in uh, rehabilitating. So um, we do offer those tools and we look for of course, private investment, that has to come in. But, but the record is clear that it really is happening. And I think major employers, if you look at the Murphy Arts District, major employers understand that uh, a quality workforce is attracted to this sort of rich resource like historic preservation and culture. So I rattle off a whole bunch of those downtowns right there. Are there some flying under the radar that you would suggest keep your eye on here, there, or somewhere else? I mean, I did name quite a few, but I'll put you on the spot on that. Yeah, um, you mentioned Springdale. Springdale's doing a lot of really good stuff. Yeah. Um, of course, Bentonville is, is doing great stuff. El Dorado is uh, practically in a league of its own in what they're doing. Uh, Batesville's been mentioned many times. They're doing a great job. Conway is very focused on using their historic and cultural resources as a tool for redevelopment. Um, I'm trying to 
trying to think of one that well, you I didn't. left a big one off, and I'm going to get your take on this because it's let your hometown, Pine Bluff. I was going to say. I want to hear about what that. Let me touch on Pine Bluff. Yeah. Pine Bluff has just become a Main Street, a full Main Street community. Um, they've passed some, some attacks to support their efforts, and they are very deliberate in pursuing their goal. Um, the hotel, the Pines Hotel, uh, is definitely in play. That's that's a huge piece of... They brought um, back the big basketball tournament for the convention center, which is yes, anchored down there in the downtown area as well. They sure did. Yeah. Um, I grew up dancing uh, at the Sanger Theater, <laughs> and it is one of the most beautiful historic theaters in the state. Um, it is just ripe for revitalization, and my prayer is that it will eventually be restored. You're bullish on Pine Bluff. Um, I love Pine Bluff. Pine yeah. Bluff is an old Delta town. Yeah. It has a ton of history, and it has a really strong core of community leaders who are dedicated to its revitalization. Let's talk about, you mentioned the tools in the toolbox that you mm -hmm. have, and, mm -hmm. and they are working, and you're using them a lot, and mm -hmm. a lot of communities are. Do you need more tools. We've got a legislative session coming up. Is there something the state could do or is there anything at the federal level that you feel like needs to help kick start some stuff? Um, you know, on the federal level, uh, right now the historic preservation funding has not been passed, but we, we feel certain that it, that it will be. And recently on the federal level, the federal historic tax credit was protected. And so we feel good about where we are at the federal level. Um, on a state level, we are not every state has a historic state tax credit. So we feel, we feel very fortunate that we do here. Um, in the last session, they um, agreed to raise the per project cap which helps um, sort of those big projects. If you think about the Arlington Hotel, that's gonna be a major uh, investment of capital to redo yep. that project. So raising that per project cap helps those really big projects like the Arlington or the, the Pines in, in Pine Bluff. So um, we think that's an improvement. Um, there are a few things that other states are doing. Um, there's a, a bill in Georgia, actually it's a state law now, where they freeze property values at a certain level mm -hmm. for historic properties. And um, that's, it's almost like that tax increment financing legislation that is on the books. Um, and that, I think that would be something to talk about. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but we'll see. I mean, we're always open. Preserve Arkansas and Quapaw Quarter Association are talking about some things as well, and, and we'll just see. All right. I get the first dibs on that. Promise? Okay. All yes, right. absolutely. All right. She's Stacy Hurst. She's with the Department of Arkansas Heritage. Good to see thank you. you. And thank you for all your hard work on these downtown redevelopment projects. It's awesome. I travel the state quite a bit, and it's super to see all this stuff happening. It makes it exciting to go to some of these towns that, you know, it really does. You might dread driving sometimes, but then you, you go through them and you're like, hey, this is awesome. So, Thank you. All right. Thank you. That is all for today's program. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. We will see you next time.